All right. So in part one, we used the uh, constant acceleration uh, uh, functions of time to help derive two relationships that um, that connected the position and velocity at two specific points in time, t final and t initial. All right, and for the most part, that's all the information. All the information is contained there, and so maybe we should just go start solving problems. It turns out that there's um, a couple other uh, equations that you can drive that are really very useful, that can help you solve problems faster. And, and so I'm all about solving problems faster, so let's go take a look at them. The, the first question to, to ask is what if you don't have nor care about time? Well, so these both of these expressions have time in it. And so if I eliminate time from the problem, that might give me one equation that uh, that I could use. Okay, so I might have a problem where I don't no, I don't have or I don't care uh, in particular about the, the time interval itself. Okay, I, I mean, I don't know what it is and I don't need to find it, essentially, is, is what I mean. And so, okay, so let's, let's, first of all, let's solve then this one for that time interval and then substitute it into that one. Okay, so uh, solving the first one for the time interval, that delta t then is equal to the... Uh, final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by the acceleration. So now I'm going to substitute that into this one where I have, so then I'm going to have delta x. I'm going to bring the, the x initial on the other side and that gives me delta x again. And then um, so vx initial times delta t which is vx final minus vx initial divided by a, okay, and then plus one half a t squared. So that's vx f minus vx initial squared over a squared. Okay, so uh, how I'm going to have to do some algebra on this. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom of that expression by 2, I can do that. Uh, looks like 1 factor of a cancels here, and so this 2 is in the the, the um, denominator here. Let me, let me move that down here. So I'm going to move this inside here. So it looks like I've got a 2a on the denominator in, in both, uh, both expressions, so I can uh, bring that to the other side. And so I'll get 2a delta x on this side of my equation, and I'm going to just multiply all of this, multiply all of this out. My first term gives me 2 vx initial vx final minus 2 vx initial squared. Okay, and so now I'm going to multiply this thing out, and I get plus vx final squared minus 2 vx final vx initial plus vx initial squared. Okay, gosh, this seems uh, mighty confusing, but look, all this stuff cancels. Here's 2, that term just subtracts that, and I get 0. And here, here's minus 2 vx initial squared, and here's plus 1. So uh, that, just turns, that just turns into the sort of minus 1 of them. So this is just equal to vx final squared minus vx initial squared. Or another way to write that, vx final squared is equal to vx initial squared plus 2a times the uh, position interval. Well, that's really handy. Let's go ahead and, and, and put that up, up here, add that to my other ex my other expressions. So here I have another expression. It doesn't add new information, but it's just um, it's just an equation that might be handy if I don't have, nor do I need to find out what the time interval is, because I have a, an expression that relates the the two positions with the two velocities. All right. So let's ask a new question. 
what if you don't have nor care about the acceleration? Okay, I, I, to tell you, this this doesn't really happen that often because usually you, you know the acceleration, but let's do that anyway. We can solve that first equation for the acceleration. So the acceleration is the uh, final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by the uh, time interval now, okay? And we can substitute that into the expression for the position interval. So this is now equal to um, the initial velocity times the time interval plus one half the acceleration, which is now uh, final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by delta time times the, the, the time interval squared. Okay, well, I, this looks like a factor of the time intervals um, th there factors out. So I get uh, the initial velocity times the time interval plus uh, one half will multiply this. The final velocity times the time interval minus one half the initial velocity times the time interval. Okay, and so it looks like here's the initial, here's the initial velocity times time, here's one half the initial velocity times the time, and so I can simplify that. This is be plus a half. So now if I expand that out, maybe I'm interested my final uh, position is equal to my initial position plus one half. I'm going to factor out the one half in the delta time. Um, x final plus my um, initial velocity times the time interval. Okay, so now I have an expression. If I come back up here, that I can add to my uh, uh, my other expressions. So now I have an expression that connects the um, position intervals and the uh, velocity differences that does not include the acceleration. The x final plus the initial velocity delta t. So here we have four really handy uh, relationships that connect the positions and velocities at two specific points in time under the assumption that your acceleration is constant. These, they, there's only two pieces of information here, okay, these two expressions. However, if you don't know anything about time, this might be a place to start, and if you don't know anything about acceleration, that may be a place to start. But either way, these are, are going to be uh, really important when you try to start tackling the complicated constant acceleration problems.